Hi, my name is Alan Villa. I'm one of the founders and chief innovation officer at Clifolio. So today we're going to be talking about KPIs. What makes a good KPI? Why they're important? We're going to use some examples to go over these things as well. And then we may get into some pitfalls and some advanced uh, ideas as well. Let's start by defining what a KPI is or what a key performance indicator is. So there's lots of definitions out there. We like to think of a KPI as a measurable value that reports against the progress for an individual or an organization against some desired result. So now that we know what a KPI is or how we define a KPI, let's actually talk about what makes a good KPI. A KPI is only good if it inspires action. That's really important. So by inspiring action, we can ask a couple of questions when, when we're designing our KPIs. So we ask, for example, what is the objective? Does the objective for this KPI actually have meaningful business outcomes? So, and if that, and that's not in, in itself a KPI, but having an objective or some goal or some reason why it's important to the business is really the most important starting point. So once you have that is, how will you measure that objective? How will you measure that progress towards your objective? And if you can't measure the progress, then the objective is likely not uh, defined enough. So once you've got that, will it inspire action? So can I take action as the person accountable for that measurable KPI? Can I take action to actually influence it? And then once I have that, what is the appropriate time frame? So if you can answer all of those things, starting with the objective, looking at how can you measure that, looking at can I actually influence this measure, and then do I have the appropriate time frame? Those are really key questions to ask before defining your KPI. Let's talk about why KPIs are important. Let's actually start with all the data that you have. Most organizations have got a tremendous amount of data that they're not utilizing properly. So the asset is in your organization. Another important one is you get what you measure. So this is a common Six Sigma philosophy, and it's really important. If you measure your business, if you instrument your business, there's increased accountability, and you will get what you measure. Third, if not most important thing, is then you want to empower your employees by allowing them to measure and take ownership of what they're producing and what the outcomes are. You're telling them that this is the goal, focus your efforts on this, and you have the power to make sure that you get there. So let's dive into some of the advanced concepts or some of the pitfalls. Now, I've worked with hundreds, if not maybe thousands of customers trying to put a good pro uh, KPI program in place. So a couple of things to know about key performance indicators. By definition, monitoring anything is a lagging indicator. And the way you need to think about this is, is this something like revenue, which is an outcome of some earlier process? Or is it something like how many people actually walked into my store, which you can consider a leading indicator to revenue? Now, always keep those things in mind. Which things will impact other things down the line? Now, let's take a look at averages. Averages, as I'm sure you've heard, averages will lie. Aggregate data will lie. So it's important when you're looking at any sort of result to actually go one step further. So if you have revenue that is pointing to the right and slightly up, you may not understand that if you take a look at that by geography, some areas may be underperforming while other areas may be overperforming. So again, always go one step further and take a look at the segmentation inside of your data. Exact same thing happens for averages. If you take a number of numbers, average them all together, you get a melting pot of one mediocre number. You don't know if something is underperforming or overperforming. So keep those things in mind. Aggregates and averages will typically not give you the true answer. So let's talk about qualitative versus quantitative data. Uh, most of the numbers that will come out of your systems will inherently be absolutes. So number of employees, uh, the revenue that, that you have, but you also want to be smart about looking at the qualitative data. So revenue per employee, for example, would be a qualitative measurement. That gives you an efficiency ratio. So in almost every single scenario, you're taking a look at both of those things and you want to balance those things. Number of people coming into your store is an absolute number. Number of wins that you have, the number of sales that you make is also an absolute number. But the conversion rate is that qualitative number that is often more important. Now the last thing is taking a look at the appropriate time frame. Every business will have a different velocity and every business will also have a different price range of the things that you're selling. So if you sell one really, really big ticket item every few weeks, 
then the data that you're looking at is probably going to be very volatile. But if you sell bubble gum and you sell millions of packages of bubble gum, then you can probably look at a very, very straight line and have a great deal of predictability. So that impacts the time frame that you want to look at. So the more volatile your business, the more you would want to probably stretch the time frame over which you're looking at your data. The more voluminous your business, the more you want to be able to be granular about that time frame. So the bubblegum company probably is okay looking at daily or weekly data, whereas the company that only has a few sales every few weeks, maybe you need to look at a month or a quarter to get a better sense of what the trends are. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground. We've taken a look at what KPIs are, what makes them good. We've taken a look at some examples and some advanced concepts. So the next question that many people ask me is how do I actually get started? So one of the things a lot of customers will start doing is they'll start monitoring way too much data. So I'd advise you to start with something simple, uh, something that is meaningful. Often if you already have a process that is manually done today, automate that. Don't change everybody's behavior just automate an existing process. Do that. We're obviously passionate about this space. Uh, we've been thinking about KPIs and metrics for years uh, and helping customers. If we can help you, let us know and keep us posted.